Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thanks for bearing with us on the, the reschedule for this one. We've got uh, Robbie here with me today. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about recovery. Uh, our good friends from Warren will be uh, jumping on as well. So we're going to try and answer all of your questions about recovery. I think that's probably one of the most requested topics for these masterclass. But uh, Today, we've got Robbie Layton here with us already. So many of you, I think, are here because of him and are watching his YouTube channel. So, Robbie, thanks for joining us today. Do you want to kind of do a quick intro on yourself? No problem. Uh, my name is Robbie. I've got a YouTube channel, Robbie Layton Nation, um, where we do a bunch of different stuff. Um, on Fridays, we usually do a bunch of recovery stuff um, and work on anything automotive. And we're an elite partner with Onyx Maps. So we're just, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. And for everybody that is dialed in, uh, if you can, uh, please put your questions into the chat or, and put them into the Q&A. So we'll try and get those answered here as we're going through them. Awesome. And then Justin is jumping on as well. Justin, thank you so much for joining us. I know uh, there's a lot of connectivity faults that were all of my own doing. So uh, folks, Please bear with me on that. But Justin, thanks for jumping on with us. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks uh, thanks for being uh, patient and uh, rescheduling there. I don't know what the deal was, man. But, we, you know, we, uh, you know our, I think anybody in a professional capacity that's had to deal with uh, doing business since COVID has, you know, had to deal with either Google Meetings or Zooms or, <laughs> or Microsoft Teams or, you know, what, whatever it is. And so I, for some reason, my Zoom wasn't updated. So I had to recreate my whole account in order to log into this thing so my just, bad for being a couple minutes late i just yeah. did the same thing mine had to update and i had to re-log in and so it's not just you robbie yeah, what's that, up with that milwaukee pack out on that wall back there what's up bro that looks so good that is my <laughs> milwaukee pack out wall oh my god that looks like the inside of my garage i am very excited yes it's a <laughs> cool organization system i love that Oh, it looks so good. Justin, we were just doing intro, so not much, uh, not much missed. I would love to talk a little bit about the intro on Warren and Factor 55. I know you've been with Factor pretty much since the beginning. I'll let you do your own intro, but there's a reason why Warren's been around for 75 years as well, celebrating that anniversary this year. Do you want to do kind of a quick intro on the brands? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, my, you know, my name is Justin Andrews. Um, I was the first employee at Factor 55. Um, so myself and the company founder, uh, Mike Costa, who was our company president, lead engineer, uh, founded the company uh, almost 11 years ago. Um, so I've been with the brand. Um, you know, Mike had had the business kind of started and established for about six months uh, before I started. Uh, and then uh, he hired me on after um, meeting with him and, and that kind of thing. So and that's a whole story itself. But we ended up, um, uh, you know, kind of building the brand together all the way up until three years ago. Uh, we were acquired by Warren Industries uh, and now uh, part of that whole Warren family of brands. And so uh, it's been a really great, uh, you know, relationship and partnership moving forward uh, to where we, you know, developed and innovated to create uh, vehicle recovery and winching accessories, and now being owned by the largest uh, winch manufacturer in the world, and also like a premium brand that Warren is. Uh, so it's been a very, really, really wonderful experience to be a part of. Uh, Warren Industries as a whole, uh, this year is our 75th anniversary. Uh, so Warren Industries as a whole has been in business since 1948. In fact, it's been uh, just hit the 75th anniversary early in June. Uh, so the company was uh, uh, founded by Arthur Warren, uh, uh, all those years ago um, and was owned by the Warren family directly all the way until the early 2000s uh, to where then it's uh, um, now uh, owned by uh, the uh, LKQ. Um, so it's been, uh, it was in the Warren family all the way up until uh, just uh, until the early 2000s. Um, and it's still most of the employees that work at Warren have been there uh, for uh, 30 plus years. So it's pretty awesome, man, the longevity that this company and this brand has had. Uh, in the legacy uh, that it's built. Um, it's uh, Warren was started with the uh, founding of the first original patent of their uh, locking hubs. That was one of the first things that Arthur had invented, uh, you know, kicking into, you know, getting our vehicles ready for four wheel drive. And then they also had acquired um, a company early on in the early uh, late 40s, early 50s, um, which was Bellevue, which created the first 
uh, version of uh, the top house winch, which turned into the iconic 8274. And so Warren in that 75 years, you know, uh, released the first electric vehicle recovery winch and also the locking hubs for four wheel drive. So uh, really from day one, we have like all of us recreating in the back country and all of the things that we do uh, for as four wheel drive enthusiasts, we really have like Warren Industries as a fundamental basis to thank uh, for that, for allowing us to recreate uh, off-road. So it's a really cool legacy thing to be a part of um, and uh, represent that uh, the Warren family. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I couldn't be more excited to have Warren and Factor as an Onyx Elite partner. And it's, it's great that you're here today to kind of talk through this. This has been I think in literally every masterclass that we've done, I get comments afterwards of like what people want to see and talking to Warren and Factor 55 is literally the most requested one. So I'm glad that we've got this connection. <laughs> That's um, awesome. It, it It's incredible, but I think it's absolutely a testament to the brand and the fact that the names are ubiquitous when you're out there in the recovery world. Um, speaking of, let's start with something fun for you guys. I'd love to hear from both of y'all is... Robbie, you're doing this on YouTube every week, but, uh, and Justin, I know you're a hardcore wheeler. What have been some of the worst recoveries that you've had to go out there and do, but still knocked it out with the awesome recovery gear that, that Warren and Factor do? Um, so about a year ago, I went with Rory, Irish, and Matt, and we had to go up to a little town called Indianola, and we had to get a skid steer, a dump truck, and a Dodge truck out of the snow, and I mean, that was probably the, the hardest recovery I, I've ever been on. And we utilized, you know, Warren's winches and their kinetic energy ropes and just a bunch of different equipment that, I mean, we used everything to get those things out. <laughs> and, you know, having the right winch and the right equipment and the right ropes and everything just kind of all tied together, you know, it made it to where we could get all those out that, well, it was late that night, but we did it in one day and, you know, it was a pain in the butt. So that's probably the worst one I've ever done. Justin's probably seen a ton worse where he's <laughs> eat, eat, sleep and, you know, recovery, but yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, really like a, I think some of the worst, some of the worst situations are the ones that you're the least prepared for. Right. It's oh, always, yeah. the, it's always the one when you're like, Oh, I'm just going to run up this trail real quick and it's going to be super cool. And you no, know, it'd be just so super fast. And then before you know it, you're like on the side of a mountain for 14 hours with like no food or yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, the vehicle's tired. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, we, yo, know, dude. Yeah. So we, we actually, we had one um, uh, here and, you know, we're based in uh, Boise, Idaho. That's where Factor 55 is based out of. Uh, Warren Industries is actually based in Clackamas, Oregon, um, uh, just outside of Portland. And so, you know, like we are really fortunate with a lot of the different terrains that we have easy access to here. Um, here in Southern Idaho, uh, we're really lucky and fortunate to have really great access to BLM land and being able to get out uh, really easily to a lot of different uh, trail systems. And we have four true seasons. So, you know, you're really dealing with like right now, you know, I mean, 100 degrees outside and dealing with the hot in the desert. Um, and then, you know, sometimes with these like little adventurous, like little fun um, two wheel drive, uh, you know, kind of just, you know, scenic roads through the woods turn to be re really treacherous when a foot of snow is on the ground or more. So uh, one time we were actually out in the Owyhee front um, and we had gone back out there and uh, we had gone out there just to kind of do like a light little snow run and thought, no, oh, it's going to be like no problem, like whatever. And I think I had minimal gear with me just at the time because uh, I was in my two door JK and then had, uh, you know, just a couple other buddies that had Jeeps that were out there. And, um, we were just running up to this summit at the uh, top of this trail called Tidy Springs. And it's a really cool, like, um, it's kind of a really fun beginner 101 kind of area. Uh, but we went back up there uh, just to take some photos. And we were doing some uh, product testing, I think, at that time, a couple years ago. Um, and then uh, when we turned around, this entire storm system came rolling right into the you know, Owyhee front. And it had frozen the whole front side of the mountain. And that's the only access to get off of the mountain. And as we were coming over the front, uh, some of my buddies had a couple of friends that were with them that were like, you know, you're always trying to encourage people to really understand what it is that we're doing as off-roaders or Jeepers and, you know, trying to get people to better understand like our like a little adventuring. And we came around, a, uh, we actually got to the front side of the mountain, the storm system had kind of set in and Aaron, my buddy who I was with, had uh, just got, had brand new tires on and made and traversed this little area that has a 300 foot drop off. Um, and as soon as I hit it, 
uh, my Jeep went completely sideways. Uh, and I ended up uh, almost like in a uh, kind of like a 180 and perpendicular to the trail with the rear. Uh, now the rear driver tire was hanging off. Uh, and essentially just thanks to quick thinking from these guys, we basically used, you know, winches from the front and the rear in order to, to pendulum and basically right the vehicle back straight up onto the trail on a total sheet of ice. And I had um, a guy that had jumped in with me that was, a you know, that was, you know, we were just like, hey, man, yeah, we got an extra seat jump in here. You know, some dude I didn't even know who now I'm potentially putting his life at risk in my own vehicle. Like it was just a total, you know, couldn't see in front of your face. You know, real. I mean, it was just, just it was just a total storm, man. It's it's it was a total whiteout. I mean, it, and those are like a, I think the scariest conditions that you can get into, um, especially when you're having to deal with the weather as a component, right? And you want to make sure you're taking the time to really uh, do things correctly. And 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 now, like thinking back on that, there was so many better ways, right, that you could go through that situation. But we were really lucky and fortunate that that came out. That was one of the most scary moments, right, when you're just hanging off the end of a cliff and how fast you can really like. Uh, you know, deploy the gear and get it done, you know, as, as, uh, as quickly as possible. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's, and it's funny that both of you mentioned snow as some of the toughest recoveries you've had to do. I think it, I'm a Midwest guy. So yeah, we, we live and breathe that unfortunately, and it can make for a very long, cold day out on the trails. Uh, in that vein, I'd love to hear from both of you guys of for probably like, we'll just split up into warm season recovery and then cold season recovery. What's some of the things that you'd recommend to, for folks to to have in their vehicles when they're going out wheeling in those different conditions? Um. Well, first and foremost, take some food and water. So whenever we do any type of a recovery, people are usually exhausted by the time you get there. They don't have anything to drink. They don't have anything to eat. And it just makes everything worse. You know, if you're going to go out on the trails, just go prepared. You know, whether that be food or in this, you know, in our line of work, take the correct recovery gear or at least take things that you think you're going to need and then take a little bit extra, you know, for the things that you don't think you need. And I mean, just go prepared. Yeah, I mean, I got to agree with that. Like, you know, like I said before, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, getting out on this trail and like, doing these things, you know, you get out there and, you know, you think that something's only going to take just a uh, just a short time. But, you know, setting up proper equipment. And, uh, you know, you, it takes time, right? I think that's so much in general and just, you know, winching in general takes time, right? Uh, setting up angles, pulleys, straps, uh, extensions, you know, especially with some of the complex recoveries, like the one that Rory just did getting that earth roamer just, you know, even a few, uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, factors that go into play there. And that's a, such a good thing is to have, you know, just have granola bars, bottles of water, things to like, you know, recharge with, because especially, you know, even right now when it's this hot outside, you could be, you could start being dehydrated, and not even know it. And the last thing you need is, you know, to deal with heat exhaustion uh, and, uh, you know, dealing with the elements um, is such a big, uh, you know, factor in what you're, what you're going on there. And then really, you know, some of the, you know, as long as you have some of the minimum things, air down tools, uh, tire patch kits, minimum basic tools that you have there. Um, I think that, um, you know, a set of traction boards, are, are highly useful in, in, a, in a wide variety of scenarios and situations. Um, and just making sure, you know, you're protecting your hands, you got a good pair of gloves. Uh, and then really, you know, making sure that you have like, you know, a leader, the guy that's really calling the shots there. Cause the last thing you need is too many chefs in the kitchen. And that gets, uh, you really need to focus on a plan and execute that correctly. And uh, that's one of the things in both of our uh, vehicle recovery manuals, our basic guide to winching manual and our basic guide to kinetic energy recovery and towing a disabled vehicle off road. Uh, both of those manuals uh, feature in the backs of those booklets is called the STAPA checklist. That's a stuck assessment checklist, which stands for stop, think, observe, plan, and act. And so you always want to go through that list and, uh, you know, and, and really start to familiarize with your, yourselves in this environment and what the, it could actually take to execute the recovery effectively and quickly. No, that's great advice. It, I think from both of you guys on that front, one of the pieces that, that we did have come in that I thought was really interesting was, it, Robbie, I'd say for you, because I think everybody gets to see you recovering folks, you know, every week you're out there chasing somebody that went a little too far. When would you say to somebody to, hey, just pause for a second and it's time to call for help after they've exhausted their efforts, they, they've tried the self-recovery methods, 
at what point do you say, hey, you probably need another vehicle or your friends to come out and help you on this one? So usually when we get there, it's after search and rescue has went and recovered the people. So okay. a lot of our recoveries are dispatched through our local dispatch centers and we're going in when nobody's there, but it's like, you know, at what point is it a good idea to stop shoveling and to stop, you know, exhausting yourself and just call for help? You know, I've, I've got people that we went on a recovery uh, about a week ago and we actually took our Can-Am and we've just got an eight, a worn ATV winch on the front of it. So we were just going in to do, you know, look it over and see what we need to go back in and actually recover this vehicle. They took a full-size two-wheel drive Dodge with bald tires down an ATV trail. And I mean, we didn't go in very prepared because all we were doing is going to look and the people spent like 12 hours before they decided to call for help. And I mean, they had to go in and everybody was, you know, out of food, out of water, dehydrated. And, you know, that's not safe. So if you're spending, I mean, I would say a couple hours, you know, probably call for some help. If you're not equipped and you don't have food, you don't have water, you're not prepared to stay the night, just call and get the correct equipment, get the correct people that can come in and do things effectively and safely. You know, don't put yourself in more, more of harm's way. Sure. Yeah, I mean, to, it, to that point, like here in Idaho, right, we're, you know, we have, uh, you know, right outside of Boise, it go, goes right into the foothills, and the foothills lead right up into the national forest and the mountain ranges around here. And we just had, you know, a lot of times what happens is when vehicles get stuck back there, you know, they call, they'll end up calling like either the forest service or, or, or trying to call somebody, you know, a lot of the tow trucks obviously won't go up there because they're just not equipped to do that, especially in the wintertime. And we had a group of young kids that had just gotten stuck. We're talking like 10 miles from downtown Boise into the foothills, right? I mean, it, it's 10 miles. It's just not that far, but they yeah. were just far enough back there that you're at a cell phone service. They had been up there for almost 14 hours. And luckily, some of the, they were smart enough to where they dug out the side of the mountain to get to dry ground in order to build a fire, right? And just to keep warm because they had, they had a JK that they had run out of gas trying to keep the heater on and then keeping the heater on killed the battery. So it was just bricked. And then they had a Tacoma that they were in as well that was kind of up the hill that was stuck in the snow from them. And so, you know, once we had gotten down there uh, and found them and where they were at after we had gotten kind of the distress call through family, friends, and the whole thing to go out there to help get them, uh, you know, it got to a point to where, you know, you get there and you start looking at the scenario and going, okay, well, we're now dealing with all these people and these two vehicles. And you just, at some point you got to say like, well, we didn't bring an extra battery. We can't get this other car started. We didn't, we didn't know you ran out of gas. We don't have extra fuel to put in this. Cause we, you know, I mean, these are all the things that we didn't know going into the scenario. Mm -hmm. So you just say, Hey man, everybody load up in the vehicles. Like we're coming back to get this thing. Like maybe when the snow melts, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yep. so it was, uh, you know, you have to, you have to at some point just definitively make the call. Like, especially when it's, you've already been, you know, exposed for that long. You've been up there already overnight. It's now leading into the next evening. Uh, you know, you just have to sometimes make the call and, and, and every situation, every situation is different. Right. And so you just always have to stop and think about your way through that in order to, again, execute that plan and, and act that plan out. Sure. One thing, one thing I've noticed is most every single person that gets stuck after they call, they're mad because of, you know, obviously it, it's cost, it's costly for us to go out as professionals. And, you know, they always tell me, well, I could have got it out. It's like, well, but you didn't, you know, so <laughs> professionals out there that can take care of these situations. And yes, it's going to cost money, but don't put your life in danger to save a few bucks. I mean, yeah. that's why we use professional grade tools. That's why, you know, factor 55 and Warren, they're top tier, you know, it might cost a little bit more money, but that, the winches and the ropes and everything, it's going to last forever or at least for a long, long time, you know? Yeah. When you're, when your life is literally on the line, what is it worth? Don't right? Skip. What's it worth to the, the people that are around you, the vehicle thing, you know, the, the vehicles that you're dealing with. I mean, there's, you know, you got to really, really dig in there, man. And just make sure you're, you know, you got to make the best judgment call that you can. Right. And if you feel, I mean, you know, it comes back to stopping and looking around, assessing the situation. And if it's over your pay grade, call somebody, call a professional, you know, and just get the proper help and get the people there that have the right equipment and that can get it out safely and effectively. No, I think that's great advice from, from both of you guys on that front. The, 
especially I think through COVID here, we've seen a large emergence of folks that are, they're kind of new to the hobby, new to the sport, right? Like they want to get out and go off-roading. They, they want to see places that they've never seen before. And I think we've got a lot of education to do that's out there. Um, that being said, for like, especially we'll pick on the overlanding crowd for a second, because they threw in a ton of great questions about this is, what are some basic recommendations that you'd make for folks like that, that are maybe, they're not going hardcore, hardcore rock crawling, but they're going out to explore and camp and get out there with the family and do some fun stuff. Like, what would you say kit wise, they should, they should absolutely order today and, and get inside their vehicle for their next trip. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'll take that here. You know, one of the things that we designed with, uh, you know, we, we had released the first ever like full USA made, uh, recovery kits. Um, so every single component and all the kits that we, uh, that we offer, uh, has been tested, rated and is American made, uh, that's including the bags that the kits themselves come in. And so we designed those kits specifically because we were in, uh, you know, like a little story here. Um, we went up to, um, Brundage, uh, which is a ski resort in McCall, uh, just a few hours North of Boise. And, uh, we went up there with my, uh, my wife, myself, uh, my son, uh, was in town visiting and uh, my little brother, uh, who was just before he started med school. And the four of us go up there, you know, I got a two-door JK at the time, was the only uh, Jeep that I had. And so I can't really put four people and snowboards and a bunch of stuff, right, in a two-door Jeep. So uh, we end up taking my wife's Xterra uh, just to drive up there. And so we go up to and go hit the mountain and had a fun day. And on the way down, we go over to Gold Fork Hot Springs, uh, which is a wonderful place if, if anybody listening ever gets a chance to come here to Idaho to, to see it. It's a beautiful, just a uh, hot spring that you can go to. But once you get off of Highway 55, it's all dirt roads, right, that split off the highway. And so as soon as you turn down this road, you know, in the wintertime like that, it was instantly like a guy slid off the road in a, in a Toyota Tacoma or a dude just down the road in a uh, Honda Civic, right, just constantly going through. You know, cars just slid off the road everywhere. So as we get up in there, you know, here I am knee deep in snow, like, Aaron, this guy's tires are down, trying to rock the car out of the snowbank, thinking to myself, like, if I just had my Jeep, this would have been over in, like, five minutes. And, like, now I'm trying to go through all this process of, like, what is it as a brand new person to not have anything available? Uh, sure. And from that moment on, it really kind of inspired to start building up the various uh, kits that we offer. Um, and so that's where the, you know, we named the kits after the mountain ranges here in Idaho. Um, so we, the three basic uh, vehicle recovery kits for, uh, Jeep truck SUV, um, our, our Owyhee kit, um, our sawtooth kit, and our Bora kit. And so the Owyhee kit is for uh, non-winch equipped vehicles and okay. for vehicle assisted recovery. So it's the minimum amount of tools that you could need uh, in order to attach to enough for a vehicle to vehicle recovery center in order to help, help to get that vehicle extracted. Uh, move from there that goes into our sawtooth kit, which is for vehicle uh, to vehicle and winching vehicle winching uh, extraction and then you have our bora kit which is the largest kit also named after the largest mountain here in idaho um uh the bora kit is kind of was more more designed for municipalities and advanced rigging kinds of things but we bundle those together as those basics to say like hey if this is the things that you're doing these are the tools that we recommend to add in there now the advantage is all those tools are available individually so you did which is very cool um, to do that as well. So you can buy just the simple basics and add to the kits over time, or you can buy these bundle packages together and know that you're just getting, uh, you know, quality USA made rigging components that are ready to be able to be uh, put to the test whenever you need them. So the Owyhee kit in general comes with our standard duty toe strap. It's a two inch, two ply, 30 foot strap. Um, it also comes with a USA made Crosby three quarter shackle. It comes with receiver shackle mount. Uh, for the rear hitch of the vehicle to make that a dedicated recovery point. And then also one of our standard duty soft shackles in order to use that as an attachment point as well. So that, and it all comes in the one medium recovery bag. And so from there, that, that minimum amount of stuff you can use to deploy to either use the hitch link in your own vehicle to create a dedicated hitch receiver uh, recovery point or put it in the vehicle that you're trying to recover to get them unstuck uh, in order to attach through there. And then the same thing with either using the, um, you can use the toe strap end to end and 30 feet length. You can fold it in half and double it up. So you can use it uh, at a 15 feet of length. 
And then you can use that also, again, with either using the hard shackle to interface with the hitch link or onto some other uh, OE recovery point on the front of a vehicle or the soft shackle, vice versa. So there are a lot of ways that you can utilize uh, all these tools in just such a variety of capacities. If you're just, if you just got a sprinter van and you just happen to be like going camping and down a dirt road, or if you're just in a stock Tacoma that doesn't have a winch or any other to cut recovery points, right? Or even in a Subaru Outback, you know what I mean? Like, so no matter what you have, this is that if your tires are going to leave the pavement and hit dirt, this is the, like the minimum amount of stuff that you should carry in your vehicle to help extract another vehicle in a stuck scenario. No, it's great advice. And I think that that's one of the reasons why we've partnered up with y'all. So th that part is phenomenal for folks. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit, something fun from both of your past. Uh, what's some of the hardest trails that you guys have wheeled? Maybe not just for covering folks, but just places you like to go that were super difficult, but you love them or maybe you hate them. Um, Justin's probably got a whole lot more experience in that aspect as me, but I did do, I've got a couple that come to mind. Um, I did take my limo up Hell's Gate in Moab. Nice. That was, it was so awesome. awesome. <laughs> it was, it was awesome, but man, there was like 250 people standing at the top waiting for me to fail. And so I was just white knuckled. <laughs> dude, it was so me. good, Rob. It was the it best was, shit ever, dude. It was, yeah. it was awesome, but it was so sketchy. It was just awesome. We took this untested rig out that's 40 feet long that's not supposed to be there and took it up hell's gate and i mean it was ultimately we made it luckily but i was, <laughs> was freaking out of my mind so that was that was pretty fun um we did just do um a local trail to me in san Pete county it's called um hanging tree trail and we did a video on that it's it's pretty brutal i rolled my razor or my can-am twice um we ended up having to have mats off road come up and get our bronco out and it was just a gnarly trail but anyway, that's pretty much the hardest ones I've ever done. But I, like I said, I haven't been to too many crazy, crazy trails. Um, so that's probably more up Justin's alley on hard stuff. Yeah, well, I would say, you know, when it comes to the difficult stuff, you know, sometimes, dude, it's, it can be, you know, it, it really, I think it really dictates to the vehicle, you know what I mean, that you're in. And so you consider what you did. Like, I don't know that, dude, I've been up Hell's Gate. I don't even know. I'm like, 20 more times. I don't even know, like a, t a ton of times. Right. And, uh, I don't know if I would ever drive it up there in that limo. Yeah, like, was, That was, dude, it was awesome. That was so was awesome fun. to watch. It was fun. That unconventional thing. That's what pushes the, li that's pushing the limits, dude. And that's what I think is like the coolest thing about that. Um, for me personally, I think that, uh, uh, honestly, man, like wind rock off road park, uh, in Tennessee, that place is gnarly. Like the, I've been there. I've, I've only gotten a chance to wheel there twice. Um, uh, and you know, we're fortunate to always be out there with good people, um, like Holly Fowler or with, uh, uh, you know, Hollywood mischief maker or like, like with the guys from flex rocks and rollovers, Marvin and Andrew and those guys, but that the wheeling at wind rock is not to be slept on, man. Like it is in tree canopies. There's light mud, you know what I mean? Like wet moisture on the rocks, the rocks are the size of boulders. Um, you know, I've been there, uh, two times and I've broken the hell out of stuff there twice. So <laughs> it's really like, that is a, it's a pretty wild experience, you know? Um, and then of course, outside of that, like, oh, we got to race King of the Hammers this year. So, um, KOH is no joke. So, especially when you do it in a Jeep on 35s, that's really scary. So that, those are my, those are my two hardcore ones. Nice. No, I think that those, those are all great. It, it, it's just good that, again, for everybody tuning in, everybody here is out there wheeling it and they're actually putting these to the test. So it, this is uh, definitely not just a bunch of folks working in business. So it's a very good thing for us as an off-road community. Um, so getting back to some of the gear pieces of it, Justin, I'd be curious to get your perspective on on Warren as a whole, you're obviously in factor 55, you're obviously there, you work there. So you're going to be a strong advocate for the product, but can you tell a little, tell us all a little bit about what makes Warren and factor 55 so special when it comes to really trusting your life with a lot of these tools in a lot of cases? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the one big, one of the big factors that separates um, that company from so many others is that, uh, you know, especially on the Warren side, 
is that there's 50 plus engineers that work at that place. I mean, those guys are constantly, I mean, if you really delve into the product development, it's not just the winches that we bolt on to um, our side-by-sides or our Jeep and trucks and those types of things. There's an entire line of industrial hydraulic winches, um, stuff that's proprietary things that we make specifically for the military. I mean, it goes so much farther and bigger uh, really than you can even imagine. I mean, there's, there's trailer specific winches. There's the pull zalls, there's the drill winches. There's, I mean, there's just so much stuff and product that they work on and develop on and test and retest and salt sprays and all these things. And, uh, you know, I mean, especially like in a time where, um, you know, there are so many types of, uh, winches that really can, can kind of consider to almost be like one time, well, not necessarily one time uses, but like almost throwaway items, right? You, they're more utility based than they are actual like recovery winches. And I think that, you know, if you ever have the opportunity, a lot of people should go and check out the worn uh, YouTube page because there's a great video of a walk around through the plant. So you can actually see that there are, you know, there are hundreds of employees that are there every day, you know, where they're stamping the gears out. They're, you know, building these winches in house in the facility right there at Clackamas. And they, and, and no, they know how to work on them. Right. And we have replacement parts for every single product that they, that that uh, we offer. So it's one of the biggest things is that there's somebody on the end of the phone there that uh, will always pick up. Like we tell people all the time, like uh, if you have an issue to call Warren customer service and a lot of people ho hum at that because we've all sat on the other end of the line, like press one, wait, listen, to, you know, what I mean, doing all this Warren picks up the phone within 20 seconds. Somebody's there to help you on the end of the line. So if you have an issue with a product or you need to be taken care of, they're there uh, specifically to get you the parts that you need uh, to help you out because they know that these, these, these tools are designed for work. They're not designed just to, to bolt on to look pretty on the front of your vehicle. Um, and the reliability is just within the warranty and within the name, right? That's what we've built over 75 years. Uh, the same thing with, with Factor 55. It's really, you know, we, when we set out to develop the products that we did and, and, to, and to come out uh, with the, you know, and invent the parts that we did um, and coming up with closed system winching and, and all these things to make vehicle recovery inherently safer, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, shy away from material, right? So even like all of our um, basic shackle mounts are used uh, with either 6061 or 75, 7075 USA made Kaiser billet aluminum. Um, the attachment pins are made out of titanium rod. I mean, these are things that, that are USA sourced uh, that we make right here in Boise. Um, it was the same thing we came up with the, uh, our line of uh, rigging products, right? We needed to use the highest quality rope fibers, um, the stuff that we could get that was from, you know, uh, Cortland, USA, or uh, any of these places that were USA sourced materials in order to build stuff that actually has uh, individual serial numbers load ratings, the proper working load limits and, and minimum braking strengths listed, stuff that could provide in order to have that and then validate through uh, all of the stuff that you can see on the Factor 55 YouTube channel of all the destructive testing that we've performed over the years uh, and really kind of facilitating that to say that we're not, we're not just saying it breaks these strengths, we're proving it and proving it time and time again. So every time you even buy a product from us, you get the, a copy of the test sheet in with the product. The, 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 not only that we're saying, yeah, these are the working load limits. This is the braking strength. We back it up with the testing uh, to prove it. So there's a lot that goes into the engineering basis of both of the companies in order to provide the best end result product uh, for the end consumer. So you can rely on it when, you know, your life is in the line in the back country or it's cold, it's late, you're tired and you just want to get home. You know that you got the right tools that are going to be able to not fail you and be able to get you home. That that's great advice. And hopefully for the folks that were asking about that, that helps clarify it. the Warren factory and the, the factor 55 testing that goes into all this stuff is really so important. It's not just randomly throwing things in there, especially like Justin just said, when your life's on the line. So that is, and Warren does the, and Warren has a, yeah. And Warren's got an entire test facility too. That's even built in their plant uh, for salt spray tests on the winches for, uh, load testing, you know what I mean, off of pulling, pulling the winches off of bumpers, rope, you know, rope pull testing, I mean, all kinds of stuff, right? There's just so many things that are happening behind the scenes. And that's why we're also, you know, uh, an OE supplier and supply so much stuff uh, to uh, the auto manufacturers themselves, right? I mean, it's a huge portion of uh, what we do as a business. And so you can, you don't get to be in those levels uh, without having uh, 
uh, the proper testing and certifications and, and the validation of those parts uh, behind the scenes. Absolutely, absolutely. Thinking through those pieces of it, right? So knowing that you're getting the best in class uh, equipment when, you, when you're thinking about buying from Warren and uh, Factor 55, Robbie, I have a question for you. you. You've done a bunch of builds. You've done some really cool stuff. The Golden Nugget was absolutely incredible. Um, how do you think about when you're building your rig and building in those recovery points? Like thinking through uh, the the weights that you're going to have to pull with your winch, the the different ways that you want to position that vehicle to be able, the recovery points, all of those things when, when you guys are making those builds for your channel. Uh -huh. So on, on our builds, we like to, I mean, obviously we reinforce the frame. Um, I come from a demolition derby background, so everything's overkill. Um, the Bronco that we build, we literally took quarter inch plate and we plated the outside of the frame, the top of the frame, the bottom, the entire length. Um, to mount a winch, you know, we use quarter inch plate on the front, put some big old D ring hooks. We make sure that we have a point on each corner because um, I like to do a lot of winching. Um, everything I like to do is slow and controlled. Um, and I want to tie off the back of the vehicle to something solid. If we, you know, if we're pulling something super heavy and we're using snatch blocks or a direction change or anything like that, I want to make sure that that vehicle is planted. Um, cause you know, if you're pulling and you're pulling your vehicle, um, you're not doing any good. It's just like with the collision repair, you know, you need to be anchored in order to repair frames. You know, it's kind of a, kind of the same concept. So, um, yeah, we, we have points on every single corner of the vehicle um and just try to make them as solid as possible we had some folks that that had written in questions about like their unibody vehicle or uh christopher i know you called out uh for heavy front wheel drive vans should they be thinking about having that recovery point on the front or adding a recovery point in there if you're going to be out wheeling because i know a lot of times those vehicles might not come that way from from the factory um, I would say that if they're planning on doing anything super aggressive recovery wise, they should probably reinforce some things and add a, a few extra points that they feel comfortable with. Um, if they're just going to do the casual, you know, pulling somebody out here and there, or, you know, just adding a winch bumper, um, you know, usually the manufacturer of the winch bumper is going to give you a little bit of reinforcement on the frame and allow you to tie that in a little bit more solid than, than straight from the factory. But keep that in mind as you're building things. You know, what is your what is your goal? What is your purpose of the vehicle? If it is to go out and recover people, make sure that you're equipped properly. Make sure that things are strong enough because you may end up get out. You may end up getting out on the trail and breaking your own vehicle trying to recover somebody, and then you're both stuck. Yeah. So it, it it goes back to being prepared. Yeah, it's a great point. Well, I think to touch on that too, one of the things that we've seen, you know, especially with you know, the way that you can multiply loads for me with mechanical advantage using pulleys or uh, even with anchoring off to other trees or even using pull pals or anchoring off into another vehicle, right, to, you know, make the gross vehicle weight seem larger when you're in, in a recovery. You know, some of the things you got to be careful of, too, is like depending on the type of vehicle that it is, or especially like with Robbie's case, when they're so unique, right, some of these unique builds that he's worked on, uh, you know, what you can do is you can actually stretch the frames on the vehicle and you can pop windows out and do all kinds of weird things when you start to amplify the loads. And so you got to be very cautious of doing that and that, you know, to make sure that you're using, uh, you know, really well put together recovery points when you're doing this, because that's the thing that can really, uh, you know, change the game and making something an easy, uh, an easy extraction versus something that uh, could be a lot more difficult. And I, and I know that firsthand just from using, you know, I have a, I have a diesel gladiator, um, that we use mostly for overlanding and that kind of thing. Um, and then also my, like my two door JK, that's kind of I'm more of my rock crawler. And so when you're out in the trail trying to recover, you know, you know, Ram 2,500 trucks and larger with a two door Jeep, I mean, you got to get creative, mm -hmm. you know? So you want to make sure that everything's really like buttoned up and ready to go. Uh, and it has those extra gussets and those, uh, those extra, you know, um, uh, those extra thick plates in different places uh, to make sure that uh, your gear is going to last and, and hold on to the vehicle. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. And especially knowing the forces that get involved and in some of the, the situations you guys described earlier, especially in the snow when vehicles are sliding all over the place, that's, that's a huge factor for it. And Christopher, I don't know that we answered your question 
specifically in this, but don't forget, you can just pick up the phone and call the, the great folks at Warren and Factor 55, and they'll absolutely talk you through your very specific use case if that need be. So hopefully we gave you a good idea, but if you, you have those really good specific questions, that's one of the best things about the these brands is they will absolutely pick up the phone and talk you through it. So hit them up. Uh, all right, guys, I'm going to start going through some of the other ones that are out here. Robbie, Jamie was asking, what are your plans with the vet? I don't know if you're uh, able to divulge that yet. Oh, but. That's, that's no problem. So we, um, our friend Bud hauled back the, the 75 Corvette from Ohio a couple of weeks ago, and we have done nothing with it because we're busy. But the yeah. goal, I think that we're going to end up just redoing it and then doing some sort of a giveaway to one of our fans. Nice. Um, Corvettes are not my cup of tea. You know, it's a cool car, but I think that one of our viewers would like it a lot more than me. That's so, fair. Anyway. On, on the off-road side, uh, Laura was asking, she's a new person to mountain and snowy terrain. Is there any type of training or any ways to get kind of like an intro to recovery? She has a big four-wheel drive SUV, so she knows it's capable, but she just wants to build up her skill set in case she does need to recover herself. Yeah, so there are a lot of really uh, easy uh, avenues to get involved in that. Uh, one is being able to just, you know, you, got, you can learn from other people's experiences, right? That's why I think that uh, for like uh, for Robbie and Rory and, you know, so many others that have uh, really great uh, channels and references, you can learn a lot just from just watching what these guys are doing in the various uh, scenarios that they're in. Um, so you can always take that in as a, as a really good uh, basis just from being uh, at home. The same thing with the Warren YouTube channel. Uh, we've gone through a uh, different series um, of off-roading 101, um, you know, starting all the way from Aaron down tires and talking through that and different vehicles and vehicle setups and capabilities uh, to basic rigging to uh, winching videos. So we just uh, released a brand new video uh, for power sports. So we have a bunch of stuff for UTVs uh, that we're focusing on uh, too coming up as well. So there's a lot of stuff and information that you can gain um, just right there, just off of the Warren YouTube channel and the Factor 55 YouTube channel as well. Um, both of the Factor 55 uh, vehicle recovery manuals, our basic guide to winching and our basic guide uh, to kinetic energy recovery and towing a disabled vehicle off-road. Both of those manuals um, were co-authored by uh, Bob Wallers of the Off-Road Safety Academy um, and actually are being used as training directives for um, Nevada Highway Patrol, uh, LA County Fire, uh, and search and rescue worldwide, really. Um, so those things have really kind of, you know, will get you from, you know, kind of getting you from mile to wild in a very short time with those two booklets. Um, so those are a great uh, tool of reference. But one of the biggest things is to come out to an event, uh, whether it be an Overland Expo series event, whether it be to um, uh, anything that may be regional in your area, uh, local club, four-wheel drive club, that may be hosting that. You can always constantly learn good information. And, and the best thing to do is to also get out there to get practicing with this. And I'll, and I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I just got married on Sunday. Woohoo! Big congratulations for me. I just got married on Sunday. And uh, we, uh, had, we eloped uh, to the Oregon coast and we went out to, um, and it's a really cool beach just north of Seaside, Oregon, uh, that's called Sunset Beach, uh, where we actually had our vow ceremony on it. So you can actually drive out onto the beach. Um, there's a section of coastline right there on the Oregon coast. There's 17 miles of coastline that you can drive on uh, right there in uh, Northern Oregon. And so, you know, my, my, you know, my family and some people that uh, came out to the wedding, like my, uh, my mom uh, had rented a minivan, right, to get my aunt and my dad and everybody in it. And so, you know, you get them right at the beachhead and be like, hey, man, keep up that momentum. You know what I mean? You don't want to get stuck here in this situation, right? So. Uh, yep. We had to interject a little bit of off-road into the wedding and uh, they were able to get right through there and get right out on the beach just by giving, you know, just by talking through a little bit of driving technique. So you can't get that skill from sitting at home. You got to get out and you got to practice and you got to get behind the wheel and you got to do it with other people uh, that can help uh, with that, right? Learning how to spot really well, all of those things that comes in from being out on the trail and being uh, with other enthusiasts and uh, learning along the way. No, that's great advice. And if you're going to spend all this money and gear and building up your rigs, get out there and use them. Uh, that's kind of the best part about it. And hopefully for uh, all you Onyx members that are on the phone, uh, you're checking out those trails near you and, and finding new ways to go recreate and have a good time. So 
Uh, awesome, guys. We've got a couple more questions, and we'll start to tie it up. So if anybody else has any other ones, please throw them in now. Um, Jamie was asking, so Jamie is in Arkansas, so they have mud and wet mud. Uh, any recommendations for folks that are, if you're going out wheeling in muddy terrain, what they should think about having and how they should recover themselves, I guess, when they get stuck out. Yeah, I, I have a recommendation. Don't go wheeling in mud. I was, just, go. <laughs> I was just gonna say mud <laughs> changes everything. Now you're dealing with <laughs> that's a totally different animal than pulling somebody out of the snow. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. When snow is the white mud. mud. <laughs> yeah. And that'll set up like concrete in a hurry. So somebody gets stuck in the mud. I've seen so many fail videos where people rip axles out, rip bodies yeah. off. I mean, I would I would leave most of that to professionals. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're depending on the trails that you're wheeling at, Jamie, I would I would uh, say you know the thing one of the biggest things to think about is to really a, a really good set of traction boards can help in a big scenario uh, about getting those in front of the tires and you, you're trying to because you're going to try to have to lift the vehicle out of there, uh, you know, and depending on how deep or how far, depending on the build that you're using, there are a lot of tools that you can look into getting where it's like exhaust jacks, uh, ARB really makes a great one. Um, you can actually, you know, put these giant airbags underneath the vehicle to, uh, to get suction going. Um, I actually have a really good reel that we're going to be sharing on the factor 55, uh, Instagram here on the next couple of days, uh, of a really good recovery that just got, um, done in Northern Nevada where they did the old spare tire technique. Uh, which I know that Robbie's familiar with, but you take the, you essentially take the spare tire and you run the, the, you know, strap or rope or whatever it is that you have over the spare tire to the back of the vehicle. So now you're getting, uh, uh, you know, pull from the vehicle as well as lift. So to help to break the suction, to get that out of there, because uh, what you'll see in the back of both of our recovery manuals too, is a mired tire depth calculator. Um, and so if you think about a vehicle that weighs, about 5,000 pounds, if you have that vehicle is buried halfway to the wheel, right? Maybe not even all up to the frame, frame, depending on the lift that you have. But even if half of the wheels are buried in that compression terrain, uh, you have to add a hundred percent of the gross vehicle weight as a minimum amount uh, of a factor to, in order to move it. So if that sure. thing weighs 5,000 pounds, you instantly know it's gonna take 10,000 10, pounds at a minimum to even get that thing to start moving because you're dealing with those suction forces. So uh, really, you know, making sure you got uh, airing the tires down, clearing debris away from the tires, uh, utilizing traction boards, uh, whether you got a good winch on the front of the vehicle or um, a good kinetic rope, you know, making sure you're trained to use those techniques uh, effectively because that can be some of the most dangerous terrain uh, to recover a vehicle out of for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's great advice. Not to mention the harshness of mud on all the other components in your axle and your trans and all that stuff too. So and it lives in your frame forever. Robbie yeah. doesn't know anything about dirt and frames. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, last one, guys, and then I will turn you loose to have your Friday. Thank you again for doing this. Uh, Lenny had a question around a time and place for chains versus ropes. And I think inside of that, we could talk a little bit about uh, synthetic versus steel cable too. We haven't touched on any of those pieces yet. So I don't know if you guys want to riff on that for, for a minute. Um, so I have a, on my 15,000 pound skid steer winch, I use cable. Um, I have cable on both of my tow trucks. I have synthetic rope on a couple of our recovery vehicles. My Can-Am has synthetic rope. So um, I like the, I personally like the steel on the, heavier stuff um, but Justin could probably tell you more of the technical side of it of why and the difference between them um, yeah that's that's what I've got yeah I mean a, a lot of it really dictates in the terrain right so even like even uh, Mike uh, you know our, our company founder president had um, uh, 83 Hilux uh, long bed uh, where he had actually shortened a Dana 70 and Dana 60 um, and put in, you know, dual transfer cases, the whole thing. I mean, it's like, looks like a wadded up beer can, but this thing is like just this badass Toyota rock crawler. Like it's so cool. Um, but he even still ran steel cable, even on, uh, just on his 12,000 pound winch on the front of that, on the front of that truck, just specifically because here in Idaho, when we're rock crawling, the one thing, you know, synthetic rope has got a lot of features, you know I mean? It's lightweight, it's easy to use, it's easy to repair. Um, it doesn't carry as much energy, uh, in the line, uh, but uh, it cannot deal with abrasion, right? So when it goes across something sharp or does those types of things, it can it can get abraded and cut uh, pretty quickly. Um, 
uh, and that's why I think in an industrial application, so many, uh, so many of those winches still have to, you know, still utilize uh, much larger diameter steel cables like what Robbie has. And those yeah. things can handle can significant, uh, you know, amounts of load. And so when you're thinking about, you know, your, your average vehicle winch of eight to 12,000 pounds, when you start getting into those industrial capacities, the larger diameter ropes that you get into when it comes to synthetic fibers, they're so strong. And what happens is under load, they pinch around the drums so much that they can actually snap the drums in half. Um, so uh, that's one reason why a lot of heavy steel cable, it still has a lot of, it still has its place and a lot of application um, uh, to be utilized depending on the scenario that you're in. So, uh, you know, you don't, I don't ever want to, you know, I never want to say like steel cable is bad because there's still plenty of people that are out there using it, right? It just comes with its own different set of risks Right. And I think the main thing is also staying out of that, uh, staying out of the, the danger zone. Right. You just not don't just be standing right next to the winch line and just be, you know, aware of the situation and keeping people back because that's all that's going to keep people safe. Right. In, case, in, in the event of a failure. Um, sure. You know, so there's uh, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, when you think about like fire trucks, like fire trucks all still got to use uh, steel cable, you know, because you're dealing with the heat potentially with some of these brush trucks being in the back country and doing that kind of thing. So that was one of the things of, with a lot of even our products, um, like with the winch line shackle mount parts, they weren't designed. I get, I hear there's a lot of, I would have a lot of guys early on to come up to the booth and be like, Oh, I'll upgrade to one of your parts when I get synthetic rope and be like, we made them. So they work with steel cable or rope. It doesn't matter. Right. So that was the yep. whole point yep. is that, you know, we finally had a, a safety product that could utilize uh, for either application. So it could go either way. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really, you know, there's a great video, uh, again, on the Warren YouTube page, um, that Andy, that our, uh, friend, Andy Lilienthal did talking about the differences, uh, between, uh, steel cable and synthetic rope too, as well. That you guys could really check out for a, a deeper dive into that. Uh, but they definitely all have their, um, you know, their benefits and, uh, you know, th and their concerns depending on their uses. Totally. Well, guys, that was a quick hour. And a lot of great advice in there. Thank you, one, for doing this. Thank you for being a part of it. And thank you both for being Onyx partners uh, as we continue to grow and get out there and explore and push people further. Uh, guys, Robbie, why don't we start off with you? Where can folks find you if they want to know more, get to know you, uh, see all these great recoveries that you're doing? So you can find us on YouTube. All you do is type in my name, Robbie Layton. You'll pull it right up. We're on Instagram. Same thing, Robbie Layton, and also Facebook. So we put out three videos a week, which is a lot, but we're constantly doing automotive stuff. Heck so. yeah. Justin. Yeah. Where can, you... where, where can you not find Robbie? That's, That's true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Idaho today. That's... Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's... <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I can't wait, Robbie. Come on. Come on, bro. Be there. Um, yeah, so you can, you can find, uh, you can find all of us at factor55.com. We actually just released a brand new website. Um, so please, anyone listening, go to that website. It would really help us in our Google rating, <laughs> change a new IP address. So, but the new website's beautiful. Um, we just rolled out a bunch of stuff where you can see the entire uh, suite of a lot of the um, industrial products we've been offering in the background uh, for a number of years uh, that are now becoming a lot more uh, um, commercially available. Uh, so we have a lot of new stuff that we've listed there on the website. Um, and we're going to be uh, constantly working through to update that new site as well. So factor55.com um, will give you all that information there. You can read about all of our patents, um, all of our uh, different products. And again, get a hold of us in any, you know, in any kind of way. Uh, obviously, Factor55 on Instagram, um, Facebook, YouTube, the whole thing. And the same thing with Warren Industries. You can find us at warren.com. You can find us on Warren Industries on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, we're we're constantly updating and sharing uh, good techniques and informations. Uh, we got a there's a, a bunch of really cool promotions that are going on right now, especially for uh, the 75th anniversary. Uh, and we have a sign up um, for uh, going on right now for a contest. If you go to WarnContest.com, uh, you can sign up for the chance to win one of five of um, uh, our 75th anniversary 8274, and it is badass it is uh, it's such a cool winch and uh so it's a really good opportunity to win uh you know a really really cool prize we're doing uh, uh local we're doing prize pack drawings every two weeks and then leading up to an ultimate giveaway uh towards the end of the year so please check us out uh, if you have any questions you can always like dm the instagram the facebook hit us up whenever uh email us call us 
uh, we're really easy to get a hold of. And we're always happy to help and walk you through any gear choices you may have uh, or needs that you might have as well. Um, and even email me directly. Uh, it's just Justin at factor55.com. Pretty easy. And I'm, uh, I'm always available. I'm always down to help. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. Thanks for all the Onyx members that joined us this afternoon. Thanks for joining and being a part of Elite Week. Uh, we will see you all soon here in August with the next masterclass. But Robbie, Justin, thanks again. Have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Thank you. You too, Nate. Thank you, sir. See, see ya. ya. Thanks, Robbie. See you, man. See you buddy. Bye.